Awesome. So we are recording. So yay. Um, welcome everybody. So glad to have you on the call. And um, I don't know how many of you, a bunch of people on the call know who Matt is. So anyway, there's my husband. Here he is. Um, I actually shared his testimony a couple days ago if you want to find it on my wall. He's got a great little testimony, um, which I share parts of it um, sometimes in our um, opportunity meetings but not all of it. So I put most of his testimony out um, a couple days ago and shared that. So it looks like we are locked on Liza and I'm not sure why it's doing that. Um, I know, all I see is you really big, which is really funny. Does everybody? Oh yeah. Well, this is different. Um, anyway, that's fine. This view will be fine. I just see you, I just see you too. Okay, cool. I was just seeing you. So. <laughs> Well, you're beautiful at all. <laughs> Want to make sure the recording just doesn't stare at you all night. <laughs> That's a little weird. So anyway, okay, so Matt is going to take over in just a second. I'm going to share the screen, and I'm going to be his PowerPoint girl, and otherwise, I'm going to try to stay pretty quiet. So y'all can see the PowerPoint okay? Thumbs up, somebody? Yep, okay, awesome. All right, so today we're going to be talking about okay. filling filling your funnel to drive long-term growth. And I know that sounds like such a clinical discussion that, uh, and like a, a big marketing term, but I'm really going to break it down and make it easy because I, I just really feel that, um, you know, this is essential. Uh, before I do start, I, I didn't uh, really tell much about myself, but I do have 20 plus years in sales. I've been in pharmaceutical, surgical. Um, uh, I started out selling, uh, uh, school fundraisers when I was fresh out of college. So, uh, you know, but the rea and I also have um, about seven years where I owned a Curves uh, franchise, which is a fitness center. So I have a lot of history and kind of understanding weight loss and, and health and, and how consumers view these things and how they make buying decisions. So um, uh, the principles in today's discussion, these marketing principles, the reality is, is they've applied to every job I've ever had. I mean, it's the same core principle that we apply, but we're just uh, looking at it and explaining the, really the details and the why behind what we're doing. You know, so the reality is, is Plexus is in no way a get rich scheme that's going to happen super fast, but it's a process and understanding that process is key. But it's a process of passionately introducing Plexus products to those uh, who are in your sphere of influence, and we'll talk about more in detail about what a sphere of influence is. But the reality is, it's basically like filling a funnel, and I give this picture here so that you can maybe truly understand the concepts we're talking about. Um, but it's not only filling the funnel, but it's how you message the people in your funnel, how you message them at different levels in your funnel, um, and how frequently you actually send that message and, and what you're saying in the message is so key. So, you know, the hard thing is you're thinking, oh, this seems so like so technical. But the reality is, is we just have to focus on these little tiny principles and work on mastering them at each at each level. And when you master them and you get better at them and you tweak things, then your sales presentation will be smoother. The sell, selling cycle will shorten. And ultimately, you'll be able to uh, continue to achieve the goals you're looking at, whether it be um, financial, hitting a certain ambassador level. But the reality is your success as an ambassador really depends on your skill set and your ability to work towards improving your skill set, your work effort, and your really desire to succeed. So as we look at these basic principles, um, I would really break this model down and explain it to you. But basically all sales is, is um, really identifying the right targets and giving them the right message based on where they are and, and, and following up or the frequency to which that message is delivered. So over time, if you apply these principles, you end up with sales. And then when you end up with sales, then you have happy customers. And then ultimately, it's a blessing both to you and to your customers as they start to feel better. Uh, but the difference between being successful or not is your ability to improve yourself in every aspect. So uh, you know, I can't expect people who don't have a huge sales background to really understand each of these variables and be able to implement them right away. But if you keep doing the things that you think are right, um, it may hinder your outcome and you may not be getting the sales results you're looking for. 
But if you have an open mind and you approach it and you, you are willing to change and tweak your presentation or tweak your targets and tweak your frequency, you'll find this right mix to whether you're interested in making an extra $500 or a thousand or 5,000 or being a diamond, it doesn't matter. You'll be able by being open to change. It'll increase your likelihood of being able to achieve this. So understanding these principles will provide you the why, you know, the why behind what, why what your upline is encouraging you to do each day. And so as we look at the model, um, you'll see basically there's the three variables. It's about targeting the right people with the right message and the right frequency. And then finding this right mix, you'll generate amazing sales along with happy customers and the blessings. So let's get started. I'm, I'm going to spend a little bit more time on different areas and really focus in on message more so. But I want to touch on targets and understand this. So targets is a big picture. So think about everybody within your sphere of influence. So we'll talk about who targets are. But you'll notice on the right-hand side of that funnel there at the very top is going to hold the greatest volume of people. And those are your targets. Those are everybody within your sphere of influence. So the next are people that you suspect. I like to think of these as your top hundred. You know, people that you've written down on a list that you think by your relationship and you knowing them that they are good suspects. They're good people to, the, to really be focused on. The next down is prospects. These are people who uh, I think that have responded, we'll go into detail, who have given you a buying signal that they're interested in buying. And then the opportunity is the message that you have, the ability to take that prospect and then ultimately turn them into revenue. But as you see, you can get a lot of people in at the top. So let's just hypothetically say your, tar your sphere of influence is 10 people and you have a 10% hit ratio, which means 10% of the people generate you sales. You're only going to have one person to ever become an ambassador or buy. But the more broad you get your targets, then you contacts, the, your right? contacts, then you're going to have, say you have a thousand people in your contacts, then you're going to have your, your hundred or maybe even 200 as suspects. Um, and then your, your, your hit ratio off a thousand is going to be a hundred people. So the broader your contacts is, then the more likely you are to generate the end result of revenue. So let's think about more specifically who targets are. Okay, so we've talked, Melissa mentioned that she's talked in the past about Franks. And Franks are, is an acronym for people you know. So they're friends, they're relatives, they're acquaintances, whether through coworkers or church or um, uh, different organizations. They can be neighbors. Um, K is for kids. So anything associated with your kids, soccer, football, you know, whatever they're doing, scouts. PTO. Um, PTO. Um, and then lastly, are service organizations like uh, uh, Rotary or anything that you're involved in from a service standpoint. So these are people that you know. These are people already in your, what we call your sphere of influence. But sometimes you have to broaden, you know, I would talk about broad making that funnel bigger at the top. You have to really work. And this is the long-term opportunity that we talk about. And so with the long-term, you got to learn to broaden your scope um, to people you don't know. And so um, always be thinking of ways to serve. And you know what, the reality is that sometimes you have to come out of your comfort zone a little bit. And so when you come out of your comfort zone to help other people, what do you do for other people? You become a blessing to them, right? And in turn, they, they actually, in, in many ways, will become a blessing to you. So it's not a selfish act like you're trying to bless people in hopes that they're going to buy Plexus, but you do it with a genuine heart. Um, and it, you do it with a selfless heart, with a servant heart, uh, then they're just, just broadening your scope. Now, and the reality is, is you're not going to jump on these people and enter, try to introduce Plexus to them right away. But you'll start building relationships with these people that normally you didn't build relationships with. And they'll become Facebook friends. And then what's going to happen is you build this relationship and they uh, move higher up in your sphere of influence. Uh, then organically, you know, what you do for a living and Plexus products is going to come out and that's going to help broaden your targets. The reality is in anything that you sell, people buy from people they know and people they respect. I always like to give the analogy if someone goes into a health food store to buy health products and they're talking to a guy making minimum wage behind the counter. Like, 
I'm going to ask them a question. They're going to tell me their knowledge, but I have no connection to that person. I don't know them. I don't, you know, really trust them other than this sense that they work in the store. But if I take that same person and they know you sell Plexus and that there's some health benefits to it and they approach you, there's an established relationship. They're going to trust you and they're going to um, be more likely to buy from you more, uh, more likely to allow you to help them reach their goals than relying on some stranger at the GNC store to do that for you. So I often say that your sphere of influence is, is also measured by your Facebook activity. I'm not going to go into a lot about this, but the reality is, is that the Facebook is a great networking opportunity to get to reach such a broad audience, a broad number of contacts. So you got to increase your friends on Facebook, reach out to people you've never thought to add as friends um, and post not only about Plexus, but about personal stuff. I mean, we're always amazed at how many people like, you know, family pictures or food pictures. You know, it's like you get hundreds of people liking you. And those are all people within your sphere of influence. Um, so I think what's important to also realize is that, not everybody sees your post. And so if you're not liking other people's posts or commenting on their posts, then they're not most likely not going to have your post high up in their feed. And so they're less likely to see it. So therefore they're less likely to be engaged by your posting. Um, so those targets, even though they're friends of yours on Facebook, they're, they're not really getting your feeds because you're not, it's not a give and take. You're not giving and taking. You're not liking their things and showing an interest in them. So they're not going to like your things or show an interest in the things that you post. So the more you start doing that, the better. So we've talked a lot about targets and how to broaden them and, and how to engage with them um, uh, through different means. Let's talk about frequency. I'm not going to go a lot into frequency, but this is really important. And there's three basic things. So 80% of sales are made on the fifth to 12th contact. Okay, so if you post once and somebody likes it, um, it may take you five engaging conversations with that person. At least at five. Least yeah. five <laughs> sometimes longer before they ever make a buying decision. So 80% of sales take five, at least five interactions. You have those 20% that probably happen much quicker. They're spontaneous buyers. They see it, they buy it, they go. But most people buy because you're following up with them. Um, that you're reaching out and engaging with them. Now, our goal is really to shorten that. And we're going to talk about that with messaging. But 48% um, of salespeople never follow up, which is amazing. So you have this opportunity to follow up with people and you never do it. And you're missing out on, on, on showing your friends that you really care about them. You really care about their health and about the goals they have. And lastly is 25% of salespeople only make a second contact. So the reality is, is don't think just because you followed up with somebody once that that's it. Keep following up. Keep being persistent until somebody says, no, I'm not interested or no, I'm not interested maybe a multiple times. You just never know. So I mean, I know we laugh all the time about how somebody said no, you know, six months ago. Uh, and now all of a sudden their life has changed. Something is different for them. And now your message is hitting them and they're ready to come back to it. Absolutely. So messaging, all right, this is like the most important thing. And I'm going to go into detail. There's a lot of information about different kinds of messaging. But I really want to just target on uh, just understanding the big picture. So on the left, you see targets, okay? That's the everybody in your funnel. And the right is the customers. Those are people that are dripping out of your funnel. Those are revenue sales. Your goal is to move targets through the buying cycle as quick as possible. But it's not going to happen just by telling them or vomiting, you know, lies and knows these words. We don't just vomit all our information on people um, in hopes that they're going to buy it. We're going to talk about how to more efficiently do it and how to get them to see that they need flexes. So there are different kinds of messages based on where people are in the, in the funnel and how uh, they're going to respond to them is key. So how you message them at each level determines how long before they actually buy. So let's take a look at the different types of messages. So you have basically, I like to say you have three different types of messages in this funnel, okay? You have the people at the very top. These are your broad stroke messages. These are the things you're doing on Facebook, the posts, the different types of posts, you know, 
you're going to post about weight loss, you're going to post about GI health, you're going to post about sleep, you're going to post about cholesterol. You're going to you're trying to make an appeal to the biggest audience as possible, okay? And your upline gives you um, these gives you these posts all the time. You know, don't reinvent the wheel. They've already done it for you. These posts are already there. You just want to copy them and share them, personalize them a little bit. But uh, don't worry about plagiarizing. You know, this is not a, <laughs> There's a, no such thing no in plagiarism. No such thing. We're just going <laughs> to plagiarize share, away. Share, share all day long. Uh, and share. Don't the, hit the share button. That's not what no, that means. No, I don't. Yeah, copy and, and create a new <laughs> message. So um, the pinpoint messages are those messages that you have a friend that you've seen on Facebook talk about how exhausted they are how tired they are or um, how their blood pressure is up or how they're stressed and you're going to come up with a testimony and actually send it directly to that person and say hey I'm concerned about you I saw your post and I want to share something that uh, that I think may help you and you're sending it directly to them uh, with the intent to grab their attention based on their current health situation that they've shared or that you know about okay so middle funnel messages, these are what we call the hot prospects. These are people who have liked, commented, post PM'd you questions. They've asked you about your Plexus t-shirt or uh, your bling you got on or they're replying to emails, okay? Lastly is your follow-up messaging. And so this is so key and we'll talk more in detail about it, but how you follow up. But once you've messaged everybody, if you don't ever ask them, hey, can I help you with your goals? Can I help you with your weight loss goals? You know, and what we call it in sales, we call it close. You know, you always have to be closing. We'll talk about different ways to do that in a very non-threatening way. But if you never ask, people aren't ever going to, you're, you're making an assumption that they're just going to go to your website and spontaneously buy. We're trying to lead them and show them the way uh, of how when you get to the end, that close will be very easy. So let's talk about the, the messages of a hot prospect. Your goal once you have somebody express an interest in Plexus is three things. You want to ask them questions. You want to listen to what they say. And then you want to align the features and benefits of whatever they're, de whatever they're dealing with. You want to align it with the Plexus products and show them how they're going to hit their goals. When, so when we ask questions, it's always open-ended. You don't want to ask a closed-ended question that gets a yes or no answer. You want to ask a question that starts with how, what tell me about um, these questions are forcing them to open up and it's going to get them to share kind of what what's on their heart um, it can be get really personal in some situations and and it will allow you to develop so much knowledge about them that it'll make the sale the sale so much easier because you've shown them that you care about their goals so listen you want to you want to listen and take notes Get a journal. You know, I uh, just put mine away. I have this little black book, and every time I'm in with a customer, uh, my job, day job, then I'll write down notes, the things I need to follow up with or things that are important to them, and I'll reiterate those things back to them. But, you know, that way if you keep a journal, then you can always go back later date when you're following up with somebody and look at the notes that you've taken. You and, should do that with me, just FYI. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should start to take some notes. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Send me an email. Just popped into my Send head. Send me a text. <laughs> Um, so once you listen, you've asked, you've listened, and now you align. And I'm going to show you how all this works. We're going to go through and give you an example of what this sounds like. But, um, but basically, when you listen and write stuff down and you're aligning the benefits, you're using the words that they've given you in the questions, the questions you've asked, the answers. You're incorporating those into your presentation so that you're showing that they're at, you're actually trying to achieve, help them achieve their goals. Uh, by showing the features and the benefits and how they're going to hit their goals. All right, so let's talk about ask. So obviously when you ask about this, you want to really find out what people's goals are. But it's not just a one question. You know, you see there, ask about their goals. Is it wellness, weight loss, or wealth? Well, that's all fine and dandy, but you really, there's a great book out there called QBQ. It's question behind the question, and it really digs deeper to find out the why for these people. And uh, we'll show you an example. And uh, so let's go through it. So um, yes, Sam. We're sorry. gonna we're gonna role play. Sorry, I look at my <laughs> notes. So, hey, thank you so much for um, asking me more information about Plexus. You know, I have so many friends that have joined me in my Plexus journey. But before I begin, I have a few questions for you so I can better understand uh, your goals. 
you know, many people start Plexus because they want to achieve goals and they could typically include anything from wellness to weight loss or wealth. Tell me what, uh, what are you most interested in Plexus? What most interests you in, uh, interest you about Plexus? Hmm. Well, I'd have to say probably definitely the weight and I guess maybe the weight, the wealth. I've never really thought about it. Yeah. So, so wellness or weight loss and, and weight is what you're most interested in. Um, you know, I know a lot of people and myself have struggled with weight very over the years. So how, um, so with your weight loss, so where would you like to be? Like what, what would your ideal place be? I don't know. I'd probably like to lose like 20 pounds. 20 pounds. Yeah. Okay. So how long have you struggled with those extra 20 pounds? Oh my gosh. Probably my whole life. Yeah. Right, seriously, forever. Yeah, I've it's always been. Yeah, battle. just up and down all the time. I could lose it, and I'd never keep it off. And uh, has it? It's gotten more and more over the years. Yeah, just up and down. Yeah. But probably, you know, I'm probably the heaviest I've been now. I can relate. I mean, for me, food's always been my biggest struggle with my weight loss and being able to control my appetite. The Starbucks, the Frappuccinos, the the extra six hundred calories here right. there. Yeah, sugar. How Hello. about you? So mm -hmm. sugar, yeah. sugar has always been your biggest Absolutely. challenge. Absolutely. Any specific kind of sugar? Like, I mean. Oh yeah, I'm an M and M addict. M &M yeah, addict. by the fistful. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I remember those days. <laughs> so, you know, tell me a little bit about so I can understand maybe what you've tried over the years. What it, what have you tried for weight loss in the past? Oh, I've definitely tried every diet there is. I did Atkins to get rid of the carbs. I've done um, Weight Watchers. I've just tried to eat right. I've tried to exercise. You name it, I've tried it. Mm, I can relate. I mean, I've, I've done all those things as well. And um, I'm really excited to, to share Plexus with you. So I, I will. But I guess one last question, you know, a lot of times people have these dreams of reaching these goals and weight loss, you know. <sighs> How would reaching these goals change your life? What would it mean to you? I just want to be able to play with my kids again. You know, I don't want to feel so sluggish every day and so crabby. Just want to be happy. <laughs> I love it. Um, you know, so I, I've showed you a lot of questions here, but think about what this does. You're laying down the foundation for what you're trying to what you're trying to show them. You've gotten so much information out simply by asking some questions to better understand them and taking notes. I mean, you're writing everything down that they're saying, you're understanding what their goals are, ideally where what weight they want to be at, how long they've struggled with it. So think about that when you're dealing with these people and they sign up. Um, you can always use this information once they become customers. You know, I know you're struggling with your weight loss uh, and trying to find the right mix for Plexus. And you mentioned that it's been a long time struggle and you've tried a lot of things. I, I want to go back and maybe figure out what we can do to better um, help you hit your goals. I don't want you, I don't want to give up on you. I really want you to achieve it. You're going to always have these notes and use these on, on your customers. Once they go to buy, you're going to use this, but, um, but realize you're looking for people in this presentation when you're asking these questions. You're trying to, you're showing them that you care and you're going to then present and align the products uh, with them. Are you aligning um, now? Yeah. Did you do the listen? Uh, I think you did a bunch of this. Yep. So here I'll just highlight real quick. So when you listen, you just want to write down what they say. You can actively listen. I mean, shaking your head, writing it down. You don't want to like, once they tell you something and you realize that, oh, this is something I could share, you don't want to start, you know, spewing all your knowledge on them right then. This is all information gathering. You're just trying to take five or ten minutes and know specifically what it is that's important to them. You know, people don't uh, buy stuff um, because of your needs. They buy it because of their own needs and the needs that they feel. And they need to feel that you're meeting those needs before they're actually going to buy. So once they've, once they've told you everything and you've written it all down, you've actively listened, you want to recap it so you understand. So what I understand you is you really want to lose 20 pounds, that you've been struggling with this pretty much most of your life, that your big vice is sugar, you love M&Ms, um, and that uh, you've tried a lot of different things and you're looking for a new solution. Oh my gosh, you do listen. I do listen. That is so impressive. I, mean, I like that. So. So once you've recapped, that's your opportunity then to, mm -hmm. yeah, no. to okay, align. Yeah, sorry. 
that's your opportunity to align. And so you don't want to make this complex. This isn't rocket science. It's not, doesn't need to be cumbersome, but you want to pretty much provide them a product recommendation and a simple one, two, three plan, you know? So I have great recommendation and these are, this is basically the plan. I'm going to tell you the plan. And then I would like to just briefly explain why this is different than what you've done before and what makes, what makes these products so great. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So what I would say, and this is where Matt wanted me to jump in just so, because this is what I do the most of is, um, obviously, you know, say it was the situation with me with my sugar cravings and whatever. Obviously we all probably are going, okay, ding, ding, ding. She needs the triplex, you know? Um, and so I would say to someone, well, what I really think we should start you on is, you know, this three product combination called the triplex. It has the plexus slim, which is, you know, powdery mixed with water. It's going to help you with that energy you're craving, the mood stability you need, and also balancing your blood sugar is going to help with that sugar um, craving that you have, those sugar issues. And then the ProBio 5 and the BioCleanse are going to help clean out your gut, rid you of the yeast and bacteria. They're going to help with better digestion, but they're also going to help you a lot with that sugar and the mood and the energy. The combination of the three products together is going to be, you know, amazing, and that's how you're going to see the weight that you've never been able to keep off actually begin to come off because your GI is going to be healthy and you're going to be able to absorb nutrition, nutrients better, et cetera. Right? Yeah. Cool. So I've aligned my products with their specific needs, talking about her sugar, talking about her weight that she couldn't keep off, and um, energy and mood. Exactly. Yeah. Good job. Beautiful. Thanks. I, um, I want to go back oh, sorry. a second. So, <laughs> so once you align that, you want to, you know, you want to see if what questions they have. You know, and so sometimes you'll do what's called a trial close. You know, don't assume that they're going to go home and just buy exactly what you told. Again, 20% of the people will, but the reality is, is you need to ask them, you know, how does this sound to you? Um, you know, get them to, and wait for an answer. You know, we, uh, we had a, a young lady come to our house a couple months ago through a referral. I didn't even know she was showing. The doorbell rang. I, I went to the door her. and there's this lady standing there. Hi, I'm Brianna. And I'm like, Hi, Brianna. Who are you? I have no idea who you are. And she's like, oh, I'm organized with your wife. I'm here to give you a presentation of knives. Now, kitchen knives. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, come on in. And Melissa's like, oh, yeah, I told her to come. But she did an amazing job through this sales presentation. Okay. I mean, she did everything that we talked about and more. Um, she had me pull out my best knives, and she compared her knives with my knives. She talked about um, the things that we use our knives for and got an understanding of how I use my knives and what I do with them. And then she showed me, she, she did the features and benefits of why these things work. And in the end, this is what she did the best. And I remember the, to the day, I remember it was just happening a couple and weeks ago. And it's only like a 19 year old girl. She's in college. So Young. she's paying her way through college. Yeah. And she says, so which set would you like to buy? Yeah. <laughs> she and she it. didn't say another word <laughs> and we're sitting there like 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 raccoon in the night you know staring at each other are we buying knives like but it was that pause and it was that she was very sure of herself creates a slight bit of uncomfortableness but the key is just to keep your mouth shut ask the question and just wait to see what they say so they're going to do one of two things. They're going to say, I love it. I would, yeah, I definitely, I want to sign up today. Or they're going to throw out a concern that they may have. And we, you know, we don't have time to go in this today. We'll talk about that maybe on another training, but objections. And so, you, you know, in, in, in sales uh, and in Plexus, you're going to get a number of, uh, of, of objections. And you just have to be prepared to answer that. So you're going to go back and you're going to, ask them again about their objection and clarify what they mean. And then you're going to go back and uh, align uh, the, the features and benefits or solve their, their problem with price or give them assurance with a 60 day money back guarantee. And then you're going to come back to them again and say, so does that answer your question? Are you ready to begin your, can I begin helping you on your, your plexus journey? And you're just going to allow them to see they may not, Ideally, you know, when we go through these, a lot of this works best when you're face to face. And this is one of the things I've, 
challenge Melissa with because it's not her most favorite. She would love to be at a distance, typing away and be impersonal. I'm but getting you're getting much better. You've got a busy schedule this week. I like it. But the reality is if you try to do this over Facebook or PMing or texting, it can be a little bit impersonal. So ideally, at the beginning of all this, you want to find a time when somebody can meet for coffee. If you can't come up with a time and really they got to do it over the phone or, or even Zoom or FaceTime, then that's better. And then last resort would be just over the phone texting. That would be the last right. resort. Right. Message. Although right. Message. I had somebody come up to me tonight and we were working through, okay, now how do I kind of stop close them on this? Because of course that's not the part that I, I know nothing about sales. So that's not something that I've done before. But I asked him, you know, do you have any more questions? How does this sound to you? And I love that question. How does this sound to you? You can private message somebody that question after you've told them information and then you wait for their answer. And I mean, sure enough, he said, that sounds really good. Actually, I'm going to talk to my wife. Tell me about the pricing, you know, so it was kind of, I had given him the, um, what was it called? I was aligning. I had aligned all our products with his issues. And then I said, do you have any other questions? How does this sound to you? Sounds really great. You know, just tell me some pricing information. Okay. And I gave him that, you know, whatever. So you can do it, but you're right. I mean, it is, I've talked to a couple of people face to face recently and it's much smoother and has a more of a conversational and that shortens that, Shortens the, the buying cycle. I mean, if, if you sit down and talk to somebody and you've, I, you've made it all about them and identified their needs and presented the products to them, you've aligned everything to meet the needs that they've expressed to you, then your likelihood of closing them right then and there, and that's going to be your highest opportunity to close somebody, you know, is right then and there to get them to do it today. Um, you know, after they leave, then they're going to start have maybe have they have questions or they have doubts and they're not going to be as open with you. But you want to try to get up front and get that commitment on that time. And then that shorten that cycle. So you don't have this long, month long follow up. If they aren't ready to buy today or make a decision today, then say, hey, I'd love to follow up with you in a three days. Like give them a time frame. Don't wait a month. Don't wait weeks. Like this is hot on their mind. This is an issue they want to solve today. So you want to have a very quick follow up with them and tell them, Hey, I'm going to follow up with you in three days. I, I really want to know um, what your discussions with your husband were about or what other questions I may answer for you. And then you have to really do it. And you really have to really do it Yeah. and keep track of it in your book and your spreadsheet. However you do it um, will allow you to stay organized uh, with that. Which is a whole other call too. Which is another call. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, I think that was, yeah, that was the end of your thing. Yay. So awesome. Uh-oh. Okay. Cool. I know we've gone over a little bit, uh, a couple minutes, but does anybody have any questions or? Oh, there is. See, when I do, um, I think I've told you all this before. Oh, cool. Um, if you didn't see what Liza said, she says, if I don't hear back from someone after I've sent them information, I just say thoughts and I'll typically get a response. So just, yeah, probing for information out of somebody. Um, does anybody have quick questions? You can throw them in the chat or you can unmute yourself if you need or want to. Definitely practice your questions. Like, you know, I gave you some examples today. You want it to sound really natural. Your questions may be slightly different and they're going to come out of your mouth a little bit different. You want them to be genuine and you want, you, you really do care. You want to help them achieve their goals. That's what we're all about is yeah. helping people become healthier and reaching their, reaching their, their wellness and health their or wealth goals, uh, weight loss goals. So, but it's, it's genuine. You just have to ask, but if you don't know, then you don't know what they're, what you're trying to help them with. Yeah, absolutely. I um, made a PDF of his PowerPoint. So I am going to upload this recording to our team page, and I'm also going to upload all those notes or the PowerPoint slides so you guys will have access to all that because I know that was a ton of information, and I cannot imagine anyone wrote all that down, especially all of you. I can see a bunch of phone numbers, so um, you couldn't even see the PowerPoint. So I will put them out on our team page tonight. And we so appreciate Matt coming and joining us tonight. And um, thanks to you all for being on the call, and we will see you later. So bye. Bye, guys. Happy selling. Yes. <laughs>